Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning back here again for another video. This is Son of Liberty. So if you guys have stumbled across this video by mistake and you wish to watch part one or any previous chapter, I'll include a link in the video description down below. Now, if you are here because you've already watched part one, I hope that there is more information beneficial to your mental toolbox in part two as well as part three. Enjoy the videos. Um, so, any questions on JTERM? Right, we're going to obviously practically apply this. This is just the, the physics block. Any questions? If you have one, ask it now. You got a question? I mean, I'm going to have one. Sorry, screen wise, the hard surface versus more off road. You're still looking at about the same speed. I mean, what's, you said 25, 30 miles? There's away. many variables. Okay. I'll give you something. It's like a gun like barrel twist, barrel length. Tires, right? Drivetrain, weight of vehicle, gross weight of vehicle, including your load, um, and then the surface. All those things take into account. When you do this enough, you will get a feel for the speed that you need and the momentum you need. Look, I, I recommend, I, I highly recommend that if you are interested in this kind of stuff, like I am, that after you're done, get in a safe place where you could practice this in your own vehicle. I mean, I don't care if you drive a minivan, you should be practicing this safely and figuring out the limitations of your particular vehicle. Um, be careful, because high speed, high traction vehicles uh, with high centers of gravity, they flip very easily. So if you're a pickup truck that has all wheel drive set on it. I wouldn't do it, you know. I'd use that big pickup truck to run people over in reverse. So I'm practicing my wife's on and leave my truck over. Yeah, I would. I would. <laughs> that, that's a good point. That's a good point to bring up, and I should have talked about that. But high center of gravity vehicles and low capacity are two things that nobody really thinks about when getting a vehicle or performing a vehicle. Who here has a Toyota 4Runner Tacoma or something like that? Yeah. Or even FJs, old Land Cruisers. So the low capacity average which means how much weight you can add to it before you compromise everything, including drivetrain, including suspension, including brakes and safety, is about 1,500 pounds. That doesn't include, or that 1,500 pounds includes your body weight. I'm 240 pounds. I get George's big ass in the truck with me. That's 500 pounds. We're already 500 pounds into 1,500 pounds. Steel bumper up front, steel bumper on the rear, overland tent, uh, high speed suspension upgrades with a, a control arms. You're talking about maxing out your low capacity and potentially risking your life. The difference between everybody sees the high speed overlander and the Land Cruiser in Australia, and they go, fuck yeah. And they take all the stuff and they buy it and they put it on their vehicle. That is a foreign vehicle that's more likely uh, a heavy ton axle because it depends on it but it has a, low, a higher low capacity. That's why I'm an advocate for trucks. The low capacity on my pickup truck out here is about 3,700 pounds. And if, if we think about that, it's like, so if I have 2,000 pounds loaded down, I'm halfway through that, I don't even feel that weight. I could have that thing loaded to the max and I still get 20 miles a gallon. Um, you, you, you just can't, you have to understand your views and how you load them down and, and how they break down. Any questions? All right, who here has heard of the pivot maneuver? It's made famous by cops uh, in every highlight reel on the planet. Um, how many times have you ever heard a civilian using a pivot maneuver? No, I've never heard of a civilian using a pivot maneuver. What I think is most important about understanding a pivot maneuver, knowing how to do it, is understanding how to defend it. So we have. This high speed little arrow schematic here. So a vehicle is rolling down the road and it, it's making turns and transferring power and doing all everything it does. How much, how much contact do you think it takes to knock a vehicle off the road? Not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. oh, it's almost like it's none. It's like you could almost float the vehicle by and the car gets scared and, just, ah, and runs off the road. It's literally very insignificant because what I'm doing is I'm not ramming the vehicle to take it out, which people, a lot of people think that. 
I'm touching the vehicle. I'm touching the vehicle here. Oh, that thing went up. I'm touching the vehicle here. I'm touching the vehicle here, right? To knock the to, to push the rear end to do what? Brake traction. Brake traction. To brake traction. It's all about traction. And so when I get on the rear of the vehicle, what do I not want to do with the front end of my vehicle on their vehicle? Hit it too hard. You don't want to hit it too hard, and I don't want to get near the wheel of that car. Because okay. you get near the wheel, most of your vehicles have plastic on the front. It's going to get tangled in that and then smash it up and destroy a lot of stuff, uh, including your radiator potentially. But what I want to do is I want to make contact. And as I make contact, we're slow rolling here. As I make contact, the idea is one, I want to get in a turn. The most ideal circumstance to get a, a person who I'm trying to pit is getting them in a turn. So you might be pitted more likely in a turn where you're going here and obviously the energy of touching the rear end is here. When that traction breaks, you'll see the rear end swing, start to swing. When that swings, I'm going to pick a line. The line I want to pick is offset running this way of where I'm hitting it. Because as I come here, I pick a line and I gas on the line, I'm pushing through them. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen GRS students make down range is when they pit and they make contact, they, they have fear. They get scared. And so when you're scared, you freeze. You don't want to do anything. So like, oh shit, I don't want to do it. At that moment, try to condition yourself in that fear response to punch the gas. Because when you punch the gas, you will push the momentum and push yourself through that vehicle, slingshotting the rear of that vehicle out of the way. That's what we want to do. Make sense? When you say pick a line, like in that type of situation, you pick a fixed point to focus on and, and then try to drive to that point? Or That's a good question. You ever uh, heard of what happens when you pick a line well, and, and cross or pick an obstacle? Uh, a driving, a race driving technique um, is you pick an imaginary point in front of the vehicle that you're concentrating on, but it's always moving, right? Because if I pick a obstacle, like let's say it's in a corner and I'm staring at a mailbox as I'm using that as a point of reference, what is going to happen? You're more likely, not more likely, but a lot of people, because the way our eye-hand coordination works, you'll run in that mailbox, okay? So when I want you to pick a line, I want you to look at where you're going and then imagine that floating area. I do it as a habit because I grew up on motorcycles and I've raced a, a couple track days on motorcycles, is I pick a line floating in front of me about 25 to 50 yards. So like dirt bikes in the woods picking a line. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. exactly. See the line, don't see the obstacle. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. So I'm seeing my line, I push it, punch it, push them out of the way, and they continue my momentum to drive me forward. Right? I'm, not, I'm not slowing down. Right? So um, is it pit like a forced pendulum turn? It is. Else? Yep, exactly right. It's a forced pendulum turn. It's, it's kind of like the principles of what you would do in a pendulum. And, and when you push the rear end of the car and you see that loss of traction, you can actually, let's say you're, oh, no big deal. Let's say, let's say, let's say you break traction and you, and you, and you see the, the rear end come this way. If you have enough room on this side of the vehicle, a tactic is once you break your traction, it's hard for them to recover. If you hit them, if you truly hit them, you're pushing them 180 degrees of their uh, intended direction. But if you have the room here and you touch them and you don't want to lose speed because you made contact, touch them, make an aggressive evasive maneuver to the left and go around them and they'll be sideways, right? That's actually a police tactic for California Highway Patrol. I just talked to this. I went to the schoolhouse recently and we were doing it. And they, they have a tactic where if they're in a um, certain area, like if they get on a highway and the guy's on the right side of the highway, what they want to do is they don't want to pit them because if they pit them and swing their ass in around with no traction, they'll throw them in the woodland. So what they'll do is they'll get that momentum where they start to lose traction. Typical responses to losing traction is what? Slam on the brakes. So they'll lock up and then skid to a stop sideways and I'll continue my movement and let the second patrol officer roll in the scene 
and hook them up. Or, or they bridge, they basically make contact so the guy can't move. So uh, today when we're doing it, which will be in a slalom version, we'll be doing 180 degrees or a, a 360 degrees going in a circle at low speeds. Um, we'll demo it and we'll show you guys how to do it. But the, the car will always be pushed in towards the center of the line. And then you'll be searching for a line somewhere around here on the outside skirts of the, of the turn. And you'll have opportunities. You'll have opportunities where you see it going in and you can use that opportunity. Just don't ram the vehicle. A lot of people, if you ram a vehicle, you're changing the parameter. What's one problem inherently with ramming vehicles? It destroys your car. It what? Destroys your car. It does. That's radiator. But what else? What's what's crazy that we don't even think about? Airbags. Your fucking airbag. Yeah. No, nothing like doing aggressive evasive maneuver. You run from field craft, and, and then doing it and get punched in the face with your airbag. A lot of airbags. Um, can you, here's a question. Can you drive with an airbag? Yeah. Can you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What, uh, for all the vehicles, the older model vehicles, how is an airbag deployed? What, how, how is it literally thrown in your face? From a, from an explosion. From a piece of pet, essentially. Plastic explosive. That's how it's, that's how it's blasting it in your face. What happens when you uh, have a front end collision and then your side screws, your door airbags, because you're in a German high speed vehicle, your front airbag, your hanger airbags and the pillars, what happens then? All your visibility. Yeah. You'd have to take a knife and sort of cut them to get away from that uh, after you clear the smoke and, and debris. Um, so yeah, airbags is a consideration. There are a lot of vehicles now, including some of the ones that I own, where you can disable the airbag um, depending on the circumstance. You can do it for your passenger, there's even some that uh, do it for the driver, depending on the performance line of the vehicle. Um, like the GTs and the Porsches and the high speed ones. And this dude's getting stupid and smashing me and he's ramping me, and he goes to pit me. What direction are the wheels, do the wheels need to be on the front, front of the vehicle? The opposite, to the towards, uh, towards your left. Yes, yeah, towards my line. Like if you're, if, if you think about it just as pointing the direction of, of your wheels where you want it to go, right? A lot of people uh, make these mistakes, they, they do this, and then the first thing they do is swing it to the left, realize they're coming around, then they swing it to the right, which drives it a little bit more this way, okay? So I would want to keep it facing in the direction of this arrow, right? In the direction of travel. And what's what this dude's ramming me is going to punch me here, how am I going to uh, counter that? What happens if he makes contact with my vehicle and I feel the rear end break traction? What am I going to do? Correct. Mm -hmm. Foot off the gas. Yes. yes. Exactly. You done this before? No. Yeah, foot off the gas counter -steer. That's what he did. Because what happens is if he breaks the rear end of your vehicle and your rear wheel drive, where is all your power? On the rear end of the vehicle that just got broken. So if you get on the gas, what happens? You increase the momentum of slingshotting yourself in the, in the pit. So what you need to do is let off the gas, right? Counter steer in the direction of travel and allow him, if he starts to push you and you do that, he won't push you because the only thing he's pushing is weight of the vehicle. Unless he's uh, trained to pick a line and run you out, then you're good. Because all of that will happen is once you let off the gas, He'll run up the side of your vehicle and then have to get on the brakes, get on the gas, get on the brakes. That makes sense? So <clears throat> turn in the direction of travel, but off the gas. Don't give him the opportunity to slingshot you around in any circumstance. And then as he decides to make his maneuver, which will probably be him going, oh shit, he'll overtake you, he'll get back on the brakes and he'll be doing this. Right? Make sense? Any questions on that? So we're gonna do both today. We want to have one driver. Driving, one driver pit, and you can feel what it feels like to get both. And we'll be controlling you inside the vehicle, going counter steer off the gas, back on the gas, right? Because at some point you got to get back on. Go so it's not you're not letting off the gas if you're defending against the pit. You're not letting off the gas completely. You're just easing off the gas to allow that. Uh, you're just you're just. You're just easing off the gas. You're not letting it, like, if you come in, you start feeling that, that 
that uh, that hit on the back end of the vehicle. Let off the gas completely. Let off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't want any transfer of power on the rear of the vehicle as he's pitting, because if you do, he's going to he's going to push you because you're going to drive around the middle. Okay. Most people's reaction is gas on. When the gas on, then you just do this, right? So if you let off the gas, you don't transfer power. You're decelerating, which is key, because now he had a. a Speed, right? It's the whole movie where they're driving side by side aggressively, and then you smash it on the brakes and the guy back. Right? You're doing that in a sense, except that he's going to pit you because he's moving the same speed as you, and he's going to pick a hard line. But when you let off the gas and you turn in the direction of travel or counter steer essentially, he's going to bypass you, which means he's going to have to get on his brakes. You'll see it today when we do it. It's counterintuitive, but almost all racing performance, anything is. It's just not how we drive the moment. Um, any questions on that? Okay, ran in the vehicle real quick. Uh, I have two vehicles like this, and my vehicle comes up to the two vehicles, and I have options. Where am I going to ram these vehicles? What do you mean? think? Hmm? Either the ends or within the vehicle. On the ends or in between? Yes. Well, that's my only options. On the ends or in between, but what would you pick? And what? This is all the weight and everything is this. Yeah, this is the front right. and then all the way out the ends of these there. Yeah. Here's the biggest mistake that people make with ramming vehicles. I come up to this and there's two vehicles here. And then I look at these two vehicles, I back up because it's in the movies, and I drive forward and I smash through these vehicles. Again, we just talked about it. What happens to your vehicle? The short. Yeah. The most important aspect of mobility and basic driving is maintaining the integrity of your vehicle, because that's part of your life. That's your breakout, break contact capability. Well, I don't need speed. I don't need speed. The only thing I need is to be smart where I touch these vehicles and where I push them. Again, uh, the, like the pit maneuver, we just talked about it, touching the rear end and pushing the car. Depending on the vehicle, depending on the placement of them, I would want to touch the rear end of the vehicle and push the car, not ram the car. What's, would I decide to do it with the front end of my car or the rear end of my car? Hmm? Anybody else? Anybody think front? I think the rear would be preferable. If you have the front, I would hit on the front. Yeah. Depends on car and depends on um, the circumstance. What happens if you ram a car at low speed? Airbag, radiator, right? What's the speed of limitations on airbags? It depends on the force. It depends on the crush force, right? It's measured and, and crush force. So if I back up and I ram it at the front end of my car, even with a little bit of speed, let's say 10 miles an hour, I run the risk of deploying my airbag but also damaging the front end of my radiator. There are radiator support beams, but they are very small and they're not very good. That's why I tell people to get uh, these uh, loops on steel bumpers. If you live in country like I do and you have to run uh, the risk of big game, that's essential. But by default, for the zombies and the protesters, it's, it's an added benefit. Is that like a bull bar? Yeah. yeah, a loop is, is that bar. Okay. So, in the off road. Overland community tool. So I want to touch the rear end of the vehicle. Where do I want to touch it? Depends on the door. The yeah. axle. The axle. Why the axle? Because that's where you're going to be able to transfer that energy. Exactly. That's where I want it. So I'm not saying touch the tire because most vehicles are above the tire for most cars, but where the axle is is what we're desiring to push out of the way. Because if I push on the rear end of the vehicle, how is the vehicle moving anyway? On the axle, on the tires. So I want to put that inner energy pinpointed as close as I can to that and pushing it through. Um, I did, was that? that was uh, the farm, it was at Camp Harry. Uh, we were doing ramming vehicles and we were testing a whole bunch of stuff. And one of the most effective techniques is touching and go. It's a touch and go. You touch that and you punch the gas using all the energy of the vehicle and it will simply touch so you're not damaging anything and go. 
pushing through the vehicle on the rear end of it. We'll try at the end of the day all of those because I'm going to show you the differences in every, every one of them. See if we can pop some radiators and speeds. And then we'll have, uh, we'll have Dan drive when we deploy the airbags to make sure we can still be flowing. So, um, questions on that? Pretty easy stuff. Lastly, lastly, the breakout drill. Um, do we think the breakout drill is important? Would you think it's important? I mean, do you, do, what's the probability of you being in, in a circumstance like that? Imagine all the evasive driving maneuvers and the ones that are going to pertain to you. Do you think the breakout drill is a good one? Yes. And this uh, car in front of you, car behind. Yeah. Sorry, I should explain that first. Yeah. The 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 premise is you're surrounded and you have nowhere to go, and then you have options. You're surrounded by four vehicles on all sides, and they're blocked you in, and you're static. And now you have to save your ass. What are you doing? Well, the movies would tell you you would back up, go forward, you swing the car, you do all this stuff. What's the most effective way to do a break out of Not to do it. So true. But now put yourself in a situation. Definitely make sure you have enough space in between, especially the person in front of you, at least leave enough space. Yeah. Same, Almost. same method. I'll save it for the demo. We're going to demo it for you, and then you're going to do it um, when we're out there, if we have any cars left. Um. All right, guys. So that is going to be a wrap here on today's video review. I hope that you guys were able to find some nugget of information that you guys could uh, put in your mental toolbox for later in life. If you are new here and you are not a subscriber, I would love to earn your subscription each and every review. Please consider hitting that like button, the subscribe button, leaving a comment down below. All those things are going to help YouTube's algorithms not only help this video uh, be more successful, but it will help my channel continue to grow. As well as my subscribers, I want to thank you guys so much for your continued support. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. So until that next video, guys, take care. Be safe.